All right, okay. let's get into the last lap of our discussion mm -hmm. this morning. British Prime Minister Theresa May uh, still stagger on as Britain's Prime Minister after surviving a vote of no confidence. Yes, indeed. And lawmakers voted by 325 to 306 in favor of her government remaining in power. Mm -hmm. Now, the latest twist in Britain 6 in favor of her government remaining in power. Mm -hmm. Now, the latest twist in Britain's political drama leaves several options open, including crashing out of the EU without a deal or not exiting at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mufe Ashenko reports. 306, the nose to the left, 325. Yeah! British Prime Minister Theresa May's withdrawal plan from the European Union may very well be in shambles, but she just survived the no confidence votes. The opposition Labour Party had tabled the motion after Mrs. May's parliamentary loss by the worst margin for a British government in almost a hundred years. In what perfectly sums up the chaotic state of British politics at the moment, many of the MPs who cast votes of confidence in the government were the same ones who voted against the Brexit deal the night before. Before there can be any positive discussions about the way forward, the government... <laughs> The government must remove, must remove clearly, once and for all, the prospect of the catastrophe of a no-deal Brexit from the EU and all the chaos that would come as a result of that. And I invite the Prime Minister to confirm now that the government will not countenance a no-deal Brexit from the European Union. The Prime Minister is now calling on lawmakers to back her government so she can finish the job. On a point of order, Mr Speaker, I'm pleased that this House has expressed its confidence in the government tonight. I, I do not take this responsibility lightly, and my government will continue its work to increase our prosperity, guarantee our security, and to strengthen our union. And yes, we will also continue to work to deliver on the solemn promise we made to the people of this country to deliver on the result of the referendum and leave the European Union. She has until Monday to voice her next move. So what are her options? She might go back to Brussels seeking further concessions for yet another vote on her Brexit deal in the future. She will also have to go back to focusing on getting an alternative Brexit deal through Parliament. But what Mrs. May says she doesn't want is a general election, which would bring more months of uncertainty. She is also against a second referendum, which is basically a second chance for British voters to say, this hassle isn't worth it. But some Britons disagree and are already back in a second referendum, but believe it's not the right time for a general election. I think, yeah, second referendum, definitely. I think that's the way to do it. I, th I don't think a general election would be a very good idea for us at the moment, but um, I also don't think that we can continue as we currently are with, with no real alternatives. Um, and so probably the best thing to do is throw everything away and start again. This week's developments have left Mrs May in control, but weakened and without a clear way forward just 72 days until Britain is due to leave the European Union. Mufe Ashenko, TVC News. All right, uh, we have journalist and broadcaster Yanga TV, Juliana Olainka, uh, joining us right here in the studio to discuss uh, this developments with Brexit. Oh, yeah, and she is also the host of Journalist Hangout UK. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yeah, good to have you. <laughs> it's good to see and you. And of course, yeah. global affairs analyst Colin Sumweke joining us via Skype from Brussels. Uh, he's a global affairs analyst. Good morning and good to see you. I guess it's the first time we're seeing you on the show this year. Indeed, indeed, in Brazil. Happy New Year in Darwin. Morning, yes, Collins. Indeed. Morning. All right, let's bring it, let's bring it to, um, you know, Juliana right here in the studio to help us understand very briefly, you know, what this whole Brexit thing is all about. Um, you might want to throw that in, but, f you know, it's specifics now. Now that Theresa May has survived the no-confidence vote, what next? Gosh, well... Really? 
What next? Your package really did outline a lot of the things mm -hmm. uh, that she may do. I think there's now a tectonic shift, really, in the way mm -hmm. Britain has been run. I was reading a really interesting article in the New York Times, and I think, you know, Britain has always been seen as a country that's stable, you know, that is ruled by an iron fist. But what we're seeing actually now is that it's out of control. You know, May did win the no confidence vote, which a lot of people were not surprised she was going to win. They were expecting her to win that. Really? But then, of course, yes, they were, because the hardline Brexiteers don't want an early election because they don't want to give the Labour Party a chance mm. to potentially have a second referendum. So mm. even those who were hardline Brexiteers that didn't vote for May's withdrawal bill mm. still don't want to hand it over to the opposition. So but there is there are bitter divisions. So, so people have been talking about the second referendum right now, to be or not to be, but... Mm. If on the ground where the second referendum comes on board, what, how much of a game changer is it going to be? Oh, it, totally, because it's the democratic process. Let's not forget Theresa May when she was Home Secretary at the time. She was a Remainer, which is why she doesn't have the support from her party. But then she believes in the democratic process. She is the Prime Minister. She is the head of one of the world's most important mm. economies. And she doesn't want to do something that will have detrimental effect in history. Mm. So she's saying we have to stick, even though it was only 51% of the population that voted, to leave. She doesn't want to turn her back on that. And mm. she's not U-turning. And, you know, who can blame her? One moment she's losing um, a Commons vote. The next moment she's winning a Commons vote. Mm. There was a vote within her party to try and take her down. Mm. She won that. Who else is going to take this forward? Nobody else will. Mm. All the big players have resigned, including Boris Johnson. All right. Uh, well, Collins and Worker, <laughs> do we have a Margaret Thatcher in the making uh, here? Because she seems to be uh, surviving. The Iron Lady. Oh, yeah, the exactly. Iron Lady. She seems to be surviving all the blows are from here and there. But let me take it to Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader, who insists that the no deal should be taken off the table. How much of this whole Brexit thing is about, you know, the, the interest of, uh, you know, the British interest and, on the other hand, uh, Jeremy Corbyn's interest? Because that seems to be playing out here. Uh, Collins, did you hear my question? All right, uh, it so looks like have, uh, Collins uh, didn't hear that. There. But let's bring it back to uh, Juliana. You, you heard my, my point there. I'm not sure if it's really about Jeremy Corbyn. I think, again, 118 of Theresa May's own MPs voted against her withdrawal bill. So mm. she needs to really take that back and look at how she can appease the hardliners. The hardliners are ready to go into March the 29th, which, let me tell you now, is just more than eight weeks away, mm -hmm. with a no deal, which could be catastrophic. Mm. Again, there are some hardliners who believe that's not the case. You know, you had the Bank of England, you even had President Barack Obama warning Britain, you cannot leave, do not leave. Mm -hmm. All of the heads of states across the world were saying it would be catastrophic, and it hasn't been. So even though we are scared and we think, oh gosh, it could be doomsday if we don't don't have a deal when it gets to March the 29th, but it possibly may not be. We don't know because right. we're going let's, we're going through uncharted territory. Yeah, yeah. Juliana, let's let's even bring it back to one of the simplest question an average African from this mm. part of the world will be yeah. asking. What Britain has been in the economic uh, European economic community since it, when it was EEC mm -hmm. since 1973. Mm. 43 so, years 40, or so. Exactly. Yeah. Over, mm. over over 40 years now. Why does Britain want to leave the EU? Well, Britain wants to leave the EU because there was a wave of populist sentiment that was sweeping through Europe, that swept mm. through America, which has mm. seen Donald Trump getting right. power. Mm. People were feeling isolated. We've got a global economy. It's cheaper to get things through China. The industries in the north of England, mm. those who had worked there all of their lives, families that had, you know, generations of families that were relying on this income no longer saw the big bucks. You know, they were feeling left out through Westminster and they were teething to the right. There was a sentiment growing from the parties like the UK Independence Party and Nigel mm. Farage that was going to the grassroots, speaking to these people, telling them that they mattered. And and, you know, some people say that David Cameron was arrogant, but he tried to appease those voters by saying, look, if you feel like the free movement of people and the mm. Polish and the Romanians and everybody coming from Europe, which is part of that deal, which is part yes. of the free trade movement, which includes the free movement of people, they said, look, if you don't want these people to get 
your jobs anymore. Let's have a vote. And that was very, very arrogant of him. And of course, he lost because he was unpopular. And now we're in the situation that mm. we're in. That's why. And now uh, Theresa May is saying she wants to take it back to the people. She does not want to let the people down who have said, we want Brexit, mm. even though by a slim uh, margin. Now mm. she's going to address the, the parliament come Monday. What would she be telling them? I think she is going to be speaking to key players. I think last night she did call on leaders of other parties, including mm -hmm. the DUP. Let's not forget Theresa May mm -hmm. made a slip up by calling a general election, Le which mm -hmm. she basically lost. You know, she's in a minority government. She doesn't have the backing of the DUP. Let's not forget Ireland, which is a huge factor, the mm -hmm. north and the south mm -hmm. and that hard border, yes. because there has been terrible violence there. And Theresa May doesn't want to see that again. So what she needs to do, she needs to call her people and make sure she has the support, and it's going to be difficult. All right, March, uh, I understand we have uh, Collins Mweke back on okay. right now. Uh, uh, Collins, if you can hear me, let me ask you, basically, you have been in, in Europe, you've been to parts of, 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 of the Europe, and even back home from here. Brexit, to be or not to be, what does this mean for Africans who would be travelling to the UK or travelling to Europe, as the case may be, depending on what side uh, that one is going to? Mm -hmm. Well, um, thank you once more for having me. Um, I believe that um, Africans are concerned, uh, especially uh, Anglophone uh, Africa, because um, they share quite a lot uh, with the UK, our educational system, uh, the language is no barrier, and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, quite a number of uh, Africans living in mainland uh, Europe actually call Britain a second home. Mm -hmm. To the extent that uh, a good number of them, uh, as soon as they can, actually, um, you know, uh, migrate further uh, to the UK, being uh, European uh, citizens and having the same rights uh, just as uh, anybody. That's number one. Number two, on the uh, area of business, uh, there is a whole lot of, uh, you know, business uh, going on between Africans living in mainland Europe and, uh, and the UK. And um, with the uh, Brexit, uh, you know, chaos, uh, for want of a better word uh, to describe it, uh, Africans are getting more and more uh, concerned. Of course, uh, let's not forget the fact that uh, there are, um, you know, a small group of Africans who believe that uh, Brexit will be a good thing for Africa as a continent because it therefore means that... Um, you know, business penetration between UK as an independent uh, country and some African countries will actually deepen. We have seen that, uh, you know, with the visit uh, made by, um, you know, Theresa May uh, a couple of months uh, ago, mm -hmm. uh, which is preparatory for, um, you know, Brexit uh, going out and then, uh, you know, uh, increasing export uh, to, to UK uh, to, and uh, vice versa. Of course, in other, in other words, uh, Brexit is a win-win uh, situation for African countries, including uh, Nigeria. I mean, Britain. Nigerians call Britain a second home. Staying with you, uh, Colin Zumweke, um, what are the options that you think, what, what really are the low-hanging fruits that you think, um, you know, Theresa May should explore to have her way? Well, first and foremost, I believe that... Uh, Theresa May has got to uh, immediately, as the first uh, low-hanging fruit, uh, jettison her stubbornness um, in terms of how she negotiates. Mm -hmm. um, the um, red line uh, put in place by, uh, by her government, uh, by herself, uh, needs to be uh, revisited. I think it is important that Theresa May and her government realizes that the option of no deal should be put off the table. Mm. And yeah. that is if she's actually serious in getting uh, a cross-party discussion and to arrive to a compromise. Because as things stand, uh, if you listen to the debate at the European uh, Parliament uh, yesterday, you will observe that the European Parliament is unshaky in their resolve that no deal is no go area. Mm -hmm. And Theresa May, uh, you know, has actually heard that also from um, uh, uh, Jeremy Corbyn that uh, negotiations to find uh, a compromise going forward, uh, you know, would start as soon as uh, no deal option is put on the table. So 
Uh, the choice is there. And then, of course, uh, you have to um, also remember that at this point, it's a bit too early to assess the consequences of um, the uh, vote against the withdrawal uh, agreement, uh, you know, uh, two days ago. Mm -hmm. Because, um, as a matter of fact, uh, a second referendum, indeed, is a very, very clear possibility going forward. Okay. So these are questions I can see right now. Okay. Uh, uh, Collins Mweke, we must thank you for uh, talking to us this morning on Skype from uh, Brussels. Yeah. Uh, Juliana, we don't have all the time anymore. We have to leave you here now. But we must thank you also for coming. Host Journalist Hangout uh, UK. Uh, thank yeah. you for coming on the program. Good thank to you. see you. Nice and to see you. Uh, I'll be back. Oh, Say yeah, hi. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Say hi to, when we, you go we back. Hope, Tomorrow, we hope to right? have you more. Yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you.